a horse supporter, man. Oh my god, that, that's a crazy horse right there <laughs> coming from RGBH. But at the same time, the drops looks pretty good from RGBH. And now the tank remains coming from RQ. I feel like they need some sort of pickup potential. A ruby isn't too bad to, in terms of canceling the Karina or the Yves as well. But that they need to go back lines. Grok isn't too bad. Um, but looks like it is going to be a support Valentina. Wow. A wow. support Valentina? Okay. Well, okay. That, I, I've yeah. never seen that before, but okay. We've seen this in Indonesia, the Romer Valentina, a couple of times. But again, yeah, you're, it's very rare to see this. And RQ, the confidence off the roofs, I feel like, for them right now, is they're trying to use this experimental draft for the match point game. Well, to be fair, they have that space to, to navigate around True. these games. Uh, it's a best of five, so they don't have to secure this game if they don't want to. And uh, I mean, it is up to RSG here to prove themselves, to realize that, you know, it's really down to the execution. They need to nail it on the head because it is their tournament life here at stake. Granted, they do step into the lower brackets and have a chance, but they don't want to miss this right now. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going. Game number three, RRQ Hoshi and RSG Philippines, the land of dawn. One ticket to the grand finals here for both of these teams. RRQ one game away from taking it. RSG still a long way to come back from to this game, but let's get right at it. Both of the junglers once again starting on their purple buff start. Uh, but honestly, I feel like RSG have the upper edge in that early stage of the game with Light on the Franco and with the Karina. They're already going on to the Little Wanderer here as Lancelot just finishes up on that purple buff. Yeah, this is going to be a very difficult composition for RRQ to actually come on top. And you can see how defensively they are playing as of yet, making sure that Elbert has a pretty good lane. And this tank Lancelot coming from RRQ Yoshi is going to take some time. It's at least one one to two item progression. So there's gonna be a lot of emphasis on Vin being annoying by using those terrifies to actually scare off the Franco alongside with R7 making those split push pressure for the team. So it's gonna be difficult, but here comes the hook. It doesn't connect on Skylar and Skylar looking to bully Iman out of the lane. Yeah, Vin though also rotating here, going all the way in, trying to get the Terrify off. Not just yet, but I think that's what's key to this Valentina pick here. He wants to be able to rotate, get those ganks in, match light, match light aggression here on the top and the bottom lanes as well. So right now, on the bot side is R7 and NASA having a better time in the last game. Yeah, Nats right now, he is bullying the Esmeralda. R7 not really stepping out of his comfort zone there. The turret is going to be the defensive line between him and RSG. But he just wants to play around here. Ooh, Light catches the gold minion. R7 on the bottom side. Abyssum Strike and Demon Kite instantly once again. It's going to be first blood, but play. Look for the trade. He brings Demon Kite back. And Albert with the Phantom Execution finds the trade. The Roamer, I mean the XP laner here, traded in for the jungler. That is huge coming from RRQ Hoshi. They needed that kind of kills for Albert, considering that he does have a, a relatively early power spike. And because of that, he's gonna take advantage of the issue. But I wanna talk about the, the skills that Vin can actually skill on the IME. Abyssum Strike, not too bad to actually set up for the Brody. Real Omnition as well, but it seems like top side, there is gonna be contest coming in. Vin in stick, the Bloody Hunt instead. So this is gonna be a very, very scary opportunity if the Karina dives in and gets caught out. It's just so weird, right? If you're RSG, you're starting to get frustrated here because it feels like it's just a, a, a kill, a gank down below. You don't expect the Sicilian to be ganking in the early stage. You expect them to be just pinned down in lane, going for farm and looking for stacks. That's not what play does though. As we saw from the kill participation, even on Sicilian, he's so active on the map. Yeah, and it's crazy, right? The way that he can abuse this hero, even though it is a late game scaling hero. And right now, across the board, it's gonna be Demon Kite and Albert. How do you think these two are gonna match up to each other in jungle? It's a little bit difficult, but when it comes to the matchup, right? As of yet, before the first item power spike, I feel like Albert does have a little bit upper hand in terms of the Thorn Rose. He's got to do a little bit more damage. But once you hit to level 2, level 3, Demon Kai is going to be able to scale the ball. But no, wow. looks like the pickoff comes in. Finn taking advantage of the bloody hunt. And this is exactly how you dictate the tempo. Stop the aggression, hold the ultimate, wait for the right moment and just shut him down. The efficiency of the Valentina here in game number three, you can see, right? Finn, he took that actually in that top side. He saved it all the way, waited for that opening as R7 in that bottom side. It's actually 
So, yeah, he's going equal. He's going even up against Nats, who has an XP lead. But again, as an Esmeralda, you're usually just the weaker one in the lane. RSG, though, I feel like they're playing on the wrong side of the map here. They should be trying to punish the Esmeralda down below. They're playing up top, but again, it comes down to the execution of what they want to try to do. They want to punish the Brody here in lane, and RRQ, they're just farming really well at this point of the game. 600 gold lead now built, and they will have the better setup towards the second turtle of the game. Yeah, I mean, RRQ, they are still keeping up despite him having the later, uh, later draft here. And that's crazy. RSG, PH, they're basically forced to match RRQ's pace here. RSG, they are trying to make use of their early game. The hook misses, but Albert goes in. He wants to contest his turtle. Now they have the advantage. Bat speed's being popped right now. No. And the real medical legislation comes up in defense. But line, he goes, his bin is going to go down for his demon kite. Clocks up a double kill for himself. The counter aggression from RSG, PH. That was a good. Good catch coming from Light as well, knowing that Vin did have the bloody hand, went in Flicker, immediately got punished as well. You can see Vin tried his best to cancel the real world division and immediately got punished for it. So a small victory from RGPH, but hopefully it's going to transition a little bit more because as of now, Albert Ooh. completely bullying Aqua out the lane, doesn't want to give him the XP and goal to scale with this Yeeve. Oh, look at that, a little win there for Light as he steals away the Little Wanderer with his hook. But in the bottom side, this is what we expected from RSG. Punishing the Esmeralda with Nat's winning lane there in the kill pressure department. RQ though, they're looking for the trade up top. They know that Clint can't really defend this with Finn, but the hook connects. And that's gonna be the suppression coming in. Albert jumps in with the Thorn Rose. He's able to deal the damage, slice off, and Mon getting took low. He's gonna get taken down. Albert trying to run away. The real world inflation is there to lock him in place. Light picks up the kill, and RSG... RSG are back. Skylar will be able to trade it off for the turret, but RSG, they have the better position now. Yeah, uh, and as of yet, based on the composition, it feels like trading off Albert and Vin is not the end of the world for Mara Kiyoshi because the true carry is gotta be Skylar. For him to get himself a big kill and tier 1, it's gonna help him scale a little bit more. However, Clay now in a little bit of trouble. They might look to return the ties against this, but it's just a little bit too risky knowing that anything can happen with light with the hooks. Definitely. RGPH, even though they have the lead here slightly, they don't want to push this too much because our RQ, they definitely are the disciplined team as well. We've seen their plays all throughout MS See, being able to keep their cool. And the next objective coming up in 10 seconds, Turtle up top. Both teams gonna start to look at this. It's going to be RSG Philippines, I believe, who has the pressure here when it comes to the third turtle. RRQ, Clay, and Skyler, they've just been farming a lot, right? And I don't think the power spike has hit just yet. Albert looks for a steal there. It's going to be oh, no, gets hook. hooked in. Bloody Hunt there to lock him down. Sanguine Claws connecting onto two, but RSG find a pick and a turtle in that fight. Yeah, good disengage coming in from, from RRQ as well, knowing that Vin is, is a pretty old expendable expense to lose him, right? Losing him isn't the end of the war. As long as Skylar lives, they can look to make a comeback. Whereas RGPH, they have to take advantage oh. of the situation. And here comes the hook again from Light. RSG, they're trying to go into the back line, take some more out from RRQ, but the zoning coming from Aqua is just too much for RRQ to do anything about, and they take the tier 1 mid turret completely for free here. Oh. They want to contest the jungle, the bloody hunt comes out onto Alba Phantom Execution, used just to escape as well as the bat speeds in defense. There you go, RSG fully controlling the game now. It is on their hands. They have map pressure currently. No turrets taken down except for that top side first turret. R RRQ Hoshi, they're forced to play defensively, they're forced to play reactively, and that's where RSG Philippines find their tempo. The death ball strategy that we saw back in MPLPH is now fully on and fully running. Yeah, I want to talk about the death ball strategy as well. Demon Kai is 5 1 and 1. This is a Karina that, even though it's kind of fallen out of meta, completely ignored throughout MSC. And the reason being is that you need him to snowball. And currently, Demon Kai's got the perfect game. He's got 5 1 and 1. His damage output is also scaling alongside Archeoshi. And look at this the confidence coming from Demon Kai to oh! But Light with the hook. How? How did he get that? 
Here comes the Tornipot. Pot. Memory's trying to put out some damage. Finn goes down. Take it all by Iman and RSGPH again. Even though they were, went for the aggressive play there, they got the advantage. They got the kills. They got everything. How did Light catch Kalei out of everyone there? Oh my god, that was beautiful by Light. The fact that he was able to find the right target there. And even before, he got Skylar. So this is going to be the question for RRQ. How do they evade from the hooks that just keep on coming through. They don't have any tanky members aside from R7 here who hasn't really hit his power spike as well. That's a free lord onto the hands of RNG Philippines. 4,000 Golden Light! Again! Just shines through as he finds Albert with the bloody hunt. Well, Franco wins games, ladies and gentlemen. Franco wins games. And as of yet, Masterclass performance coming from like making sure he gets the right target and currently our Kiyoshi, they have no choice but to completely dodge fights until Skylar comes online but before that let's take a look at the damage output coming so far Iman 21,000 no surprises considering that he's got free hits free dummy targets throughout all the pickoffs so far yeah, Iman sitting at the top of the charts now, and that's not going to be good for RRQ. Hoshi, as they go into the game, game, the Lord is also coming, coming down, 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 down the bottom side, side so RRQ, RRQ they need to be able, able to defend this. this. See the ice, ice one, one also built up from uh, 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 here, and, and that's, that's going to provide so much utility that RRQ just doesn't have currently. As Zelda actually fell down by 9 lane because of all the gangs in and all obviously with Nats on that gyro pressuring him on even if he's only actually able to take that enchanted talisman. Now, now Finn taking that blood bloody hunt feel real relationship locking them all in the place. The Lord is going to go in on the base with the mon just chunking that turret down. Clay clearing it out as well. Moving over, over to the main will be a good defense for our RQ. The hook does not connect once again, but RSG they find all of the turrets outside the base. Yeah, yeah, this is going to be a very, very difficult situation for Mark Yoshi, considering that now, Albert, I just caught a glimpse of item as well. I thought he was going to go for a tank lens, which we did see before. He seems like he's going for full damage. That means there is not enough people soaking up damage. In this case, R7, not even close to his uh, a big defensive item. He's got enchantments as well. Next item, Dominance Ice. It's not even completed yet, so it's going to take a little bit more time before they can actually have a pretty decent tank in the front line for RRQ. I agree. It's, it's going, going to be uh, rough here for RRQ because, because of that no front line, but RNG look at this light going for the play again. Goes for the Iron Hook. R7 able to dodge, sidestep away from that, but that, now it's going to be the real world. Inflation light, light flickers forward and he finds R7. It's going to be traded back though. One for one, XP lane for Roamer. I would take that any day if I was RSGPH. Nath jumping back onto Skyler. The stun comes in and the damage from Clay is starting to show. That bad impact, you can no longer write that off. You can see RSG, they want to close this as quick as possible as well before Clay starts to output even more damage. But looking at RRQ, yes, they have that opportunity. They are really far behind though, 6k gold at this point. So how do you think they need to start looking at this? It's, it's all about buying time coming for RRQ, right? It's all about making sure that Clay is able to scale 15. And once you build out those Sicilian stacks, that is where he hits the hardest. And as of yet, R7 getting punished time and time game means he's not going to be able to be very, very tanky. Skylar, he just got his brute force breastplate. That means that it's going to be a little bit lesser damage on that marksman division, which like I said as well, he needs one to two more items. And RSGPH, they cannot afford to give away this lead to RQ Hoshi. And now, they are going to start off the lot, and I don't think RQ Hoshi can start at all. Yeah, I was about to say, I think they started it a little bit prematurely there. They had to wait for the 12-minute mark to get that Enhanced Lord. And now that it is enhanced, they started again. There you go. That's RSG Philippines. Again, staying disciplined. Don't really want to rush things. But RQ, it seems like they want to force a fight here. Vin really dashing forward. Light going to be chunked there. He goes in for the hook. Goes on to Vin. That's a suppression as well. Real world inflation. Locking all of them in place. Skylar forced the flick back. Nats looking for the re-engage. Light is low, but he can still look for another hook as RSG with this pick, with this man advantage, they will surely be looking for a free Lord here. Yeah, they're gonna turn their sights to that immediately, as you said. RSG Demon Kite now at the Lord. No chance for RRQ to contest this at all. Nas goes for R7, tries to put some damage, but it's not gonna be enough to disengage. They have to back away to protect some of their turrets back here. Yeah, that's going to be an easy turret destroyed down bottom from RRQ. A little bit small victories in terms of map control. But I want to talk about how important that fight was. Because RRQ, they should have died a little bit more. But because they had brute force breastplate, they were having so much mobility to kite away the real motivation. It's all good for RRQ. As long as they do not lose Skylar, all is well. And it's all about buying time as well. Albert is level 14. And if... 
and only if Araki Oshi is able to defend against his Lord, it's a pretty, pretty good timing to actually make a comeback for Araki Oshi. Lack of frontline is really, really hurting our RQ here. And now with the Lord coming down on the bottom side, they will definitely secure this bottom inhibitor. RSG looking to get even more Life. out Ooh. of this. There you go. Bottom is gone. RSG oh. cracking open the base. RQ trying to look for an opportunity. Aqua already at half HP, but gonna play safe. So RSG just focusing on the objectives. Yeah, RQ with the standard defense again. They don't want to try anything too fancy. They are a okay with giving turrets away. It just gives RSG Philippines the chance. And now look at this. A curveball from RQ. They go in for a play on it. Skylar goes up for a stun. It's gonna be Vin actually locked up there in the midst of it all. He gets taken down. That was them with no follow-up. A Bissom strike connects as that's Clay looking for the Sanguine Claws. Gets two, but again, they lose one for nothing. RSG just two steps ahead here when it comes to RRQ's pickoff game. Yeah, it's just so very difficult to fight this, especially with the Franco plays, right? We talked about this days for days now. That's the power of what Franco brings to the table. However, you can't write off RRQ Oshi yet. It's possible to make a comeback as long as they stall into his later stage game. Unless, oh. like, gets this hook or... Nope, he doesn't, but uh, it's still gonna be a borrowed time as of yet because if one mistake is all they need from RRQ Oshi to make a comeback. It's same can be said for RSGPH as well. They need one mistake from RRQ Oshi and it's over for them. I mean, at this stage, we're almost 15 minutes, right? As these two teams scale up, get their items, it is... MLBB at its prime. Any mistake in any team fight could cost you potentially the game. And our RSG though, they are getting full map control at this point. And even though you said RRQ, they have to buy their time, buy enough for them to fight RSG, they are stripping everything from RRQ. Yeah, I, I definitely agree in that sense as well. But uh, we did see an Ice Queen 1 purchase up on Clay. So we are going to be seeing a little bit more utilitarian on this Cecilion. But like I said as well, it's, one, it's only one item. It helps you in one small fight, but they still need to buy a little bit more time. And currently, R7, he's not even close to his Oracle yet. And okay, never mind. As soon as I say <laughs> it, he just got it. But even then, it's still not enough. He needs his secondary item. Maybe an Ice Cream 1, maybe an Immortality. It's all about buying those times. And now, with the next Lord, I don't think RRQ Hoshi should force the fight. They should go for pickoffs. However, RG, they have something new in store. They're looking oh. for the gank on Skylar. And I don't think they realize that this is happening. This is a sandwich play here that RG is doing. And this could be really, really good. Again, that backline presence from RRQ. Oh, and here in this line, RSG! The read! The beautiful macro play! As RRQ just scramble here. R7 looking for the play. It's going to be been taken down. And RSG, what a play! What a 200 IQ macro decision! to stay in that bush with three members. Absolutely insane. You can see that RQ Hoshi, they tried their best. The moment they recognized that that was what RSG was doing, they immediately retreated. Skylar flickered away, but still split apart. Completely nothing they can do. And now RSG, they get this Lord completely for free, but up top! Skylar gets the press just as we were talking about him. Ooh. Nowhere for him to go, even with the immortality. And that's our RQ Hoshi down to two men. Play with the Sangling Claws and a bat Impact. Not going to be able to do anything. Here we go though, they're trying to fight back as much as possible. Let's see if they're actually able to defend here for RRQ. It's all against them as RSG have three waves pushing up and the mid lane with that enhanced Lord in the 16th minute of the game. 10,000 gold lead light. They're standing there menacingly looking for oh, the oh. Oh. He finds it on Sabin! And now it's gonna be Albert jumping in with the puncture, jumping out, not going to be enough. He gets slain, a double kill as RSG look for R7, look for the base. They are back, two to one. Let's see it go all the way. Let's